If you have any old or damaged photographs laying around that you'd like to bring back to life, you can easily improve them and restore them in Photoshop. Start by scanning your image and saving it as a TIFF or a PSD, and then open the file in Photoshop. Now, depending on the edges of your original, you may need to crop and straighten, and fortunately there's a tool for that in Photoshop. Under the File menu, choose Automate and Crop and Straighten, and this will leave your original intact and give you a duplicate copy that's cropped and straightened. Now, it's not foolproof, so as you can see, there's still a little bit of the edge at the top, and it looks like a slight rotation, so you could either go in and use the crop tool, or one trick that I sometimes use is just use a rectangular marquee and then nudge it downwards with your arrow keys to remove any area that you don't want and then use the image crop option. You could do the same thing on the bottom, just nudge it up, image crop. And if you did need to rotate the image at all, you would have to convert the locked background layer into a regular layer and then you can use Command or Control T to slightly adjust the rotation and hit enter or return. Now because we do not want to destructively edit this image, we would probably do all of our adjustments on separate layers above this one. On a duplicate layer, and we could do Command or Control J to duplicate the layer, we can apply the Remove Dust in Scratches filter under the Noise menu. So choose Filter, Noise, and then Dust in Scratches. This it has a really simple dialog box and you can increase or decrease the radius and as you can see you really don't need that much probably one or two pixels there's one there's two so one's not enough two is just about right three is way too much so we'll go with two you can also adjust the threshold and that is sort of the sharpening of the effect so I'd probably leave it lower because I really want this scratch to go away and then click OK. And because this is on its own layer, that means that I can actually erase parts of it to reveal the underlying layer with my eraser tool. So the parts that I would want to see are her. And you can use uh, any size brush for this. I would do a fairly soft edge, not a hard edge. And since I need most of this, I'll just go really big. We want to make sure that we see those cards nice and crisp and get all the quality and clarity out of the original image as it was shot. And then you can see that the sharpening and the dust and scratches, the removal of those, just sort of cleans everything up. Now there are some other anomalies in the image that you could clean up with other tools. So for instance, there's a little scratch right here. And so for something like that, I'd probably use the clone stamp tool or the healing brush, spot healing brush. Changing the brush size, I would want to say sample all layers current and below. Hold down my alter option key to sample and then click to paint on top. You might want to zoom in so that you can get more precise with your corrections. And then if you saw anything else like any other dust and scratches, that you would want to remove, you can go around and clean those up. I kind of like some of the scratchy quality of this particular image, but you know, if you were doing like an old wedding photo or something, you would probably want to go in and really refine. Now for the text here, which had her name and some other numbers, you might want to do one of the healing tools like the spot healing brush or the regular healing brush. With a spot healing brush, all you need to do is click and drag and release, and it will heal based on the surrounding pixels. Now, you might need to do something else with the healing brush, which you would sample first and then paint. And then it heals as you release your mouse. Now, I'd like to apply a sharpening filter, but before I do, I'd like to merge these two layers together. And if I hold down my Alt key while I select the Options menu, and choose Merge, I can create a new layer that combines the other two. Now we can apply a sharpening filter that will sharpen up the edges. The amount is completely up to you, so usually I'll just say scroll along here and see how much you think you need. 
also adjusting the radius. Now you can see that's way too much. And the threshold. Just use your best guesstimate to get the image to have as much sharpening as you think it needs. And when you're finished and you think you got it right, click the OK button. You could also adjust the tonality of your image with a curves adjustment layer or a levels adjustment layer. Let's do levels here and we'll click auto. So that really brought the brightness up and we might want to adjust the midtones so that it's a little bit darker. It's nice to see the details in the midtone area, but we also want to have the full contrast that we had before. Next we can do some hand tinting and let's just zoom down a little bit more. For the tinting, I usually put each tint on its own layer. So we can start with making a selection, and I'll just select this layer here with my quick selection tool of the background behind her. And then I could go back in holding down my minus key, maybe changing the brush size to deselect certain areas. I don't want her hands or the cards to be part of that selection. I could also go back in with my lasso tool to refine the selection or even go into quick mask mode. Use any of the other selection tools to refine the selection. Now I do not want the edges of this so I will subtract those like so from the top left and right. Let's make that a little bit tighter like so. And then with my selection back up on this layer, I can fill this with a solid color. So the color can be anything I choose. It could be blue, green, yellow. Let's do green. That seems like a fortune teller type color. And then I can adjust the blending mode and the opacity. Let's bring our opacity down to 50% and change the blending mode to something like overlay. So it's just a hint of color. We'll create another layer. So we call this one background. And the new layer, we can give her some rosy cheeks. You'll choose a color that you'd like to paint with. Grab your brush tool and increase or decrease the size of the brush. And you could even change the blending mode here to soft light or overlay, something like that, lightener screen, so that when you paint, you're painting with opacity. But even if it is too dark for you, you can easily modify the opacity in the layers panel. So we just want to give her a subtle hint of color, nothing too overwhelming. We could do the same thing for her hair. Maybe she has slightly reddish tint to her hair. So we'll choose an auburn type color to paint with, something like that. And then grabbing our brush tool again, increasing or decreasing the size of the brush. And I'm just going to uh, sort of crudely paint the hair area here quickly just as a demonstration and of course if this was your own photograph you would spend much more time and care making sure that you had all the areas covered nicely and smoothly and again we will modify our opacity so that it's just a hint of color and now let's give her some nice red lips about a deep, deep red. And we'll zoom in, get close, change our brush size down, and paint those lips with care. If you make a mistake, you can use your eraser tool. And I would paint with a slightly soft edge brush here, which happens to be more forgiving around the edge with the semi-transparent pixels. Zoom back out and we'll lighten up the opacity of her lips. And then maybe the last thing we'll do is give her scarf a hint of color, maybe purple. And again with our paintbrush tool, like so, and adjusting our opacity and or the blending mode. The last thing I might do with a photograph like this is to give it, instead of hard edges, rounded edges. 
So what I would probably do is get the rounded rectangle tool, and maybe not with purple, but with white, drag a selection out like this, and then select that shape and inverse it, toss that layer, and then on a cookie adjustment layer, fill that with a solid color of my choosing. Maybe I don't want to do white, maybe I want to do something that has a hint of yellow in it, so it looks a little bit tarnished. Old, yellowed, faded, like so. And I can call this one the frame. Since I like to do a cleanup at the end, what I normally will do is grab all the adjustment layers and throw them into a new folder so that I can quickly see my before and after, and then if I need to, go back in and make any changes.